Hey subscribers and watchers, what's up? From Slightner, this is Vivs here. In this video, let's continue our discussion of the bank program and talk about the deposit and withdraw methods. So what I have here on NetBeans is some simple cases written for you guys to understand what is exactly going on. If you guys notice, there is the first case one where we have zero customers that are added to our program. And at that time, if you say enter the account number for deposit, say A122, and then it will directly say that the account number was not found because zero customers have been added so far. Next is the case two where you have four customers with say account numbers 121, 2, 3, 4. At that point, if someone wants to deposit money after this, they say and, and they click deposit, it's gonna say enter the account number. Now if you enter A125, this A125 is gonna be compared with 1, 2, 3, and 4. And since none of them match with this, it's gonna say account number not found and then there's the last case which is case 3 where there are the same account numbers 1 2 3 4 this time you enter the account number one of them which is 121 then it will ask you how much money you want to deposit and then it will successfully see that the money was deposited so this is the kind of operation that you want to do for the deposit method so let's talk about how we can get to know if customers are added or not so let's go ahead and let's run this first and try to understand what happens at this point if I try to deposit money there is no point because I have not added even a single customer hence I need to ensure that deposit money doesn't work at this point so how do I do that if you guys remember the number of customers variable is zero right every time we add a customer we are selecting choice one here for add a customer that choice goes here one and case one gets executed where number of customers is increased by plus plus right so if we can find out that the number of customers is zero that means no customer was added so in this case I can directly print a system.out.println and say account number not found or something like that now if this is not the case and let's say there are four customers so in that case you'll have to compare the account number you entered which is 125 with each of these account numbers now when I say each of these we are talking about a nice for loop over here that's gonna browse through all the customers so in the else part let's write a for loop I'm gonna say for and i equals to zero i less than number of customers i plus plus so if we added one customer here at the top then the value of number of customers will be one In that case the for loop will run from i equals to zero i less than one i plus plus it will run only once right so inside this we need to get the particular customer at the given position now if you guys remember go to the top there is our customer array which says customer C is bank dot guest customer. So this C can give us the way to browse through the different customers. So here I'm going to say C of I dot get account. So first step is to actually get the account of the customer. Store that inside an account temp object over here. And then use this account to get the account number. Now I can say temp dot get account number. Now if you guys go to the account class, remember very well down over here in the account class to get the account number we had a method called get account number and this is the method we are going to be using here inside the for loop again let's store this account number in something called acc temp so at this point we have got the account number now let's just try printing this out and see what happens i'm going to say system.out.println over here and just say acc temp over here and let's try to see what happens at this point if i run this application by saying shift f6 as you guys notice our start thing starts running here if I say deposit money it says account number not found because number of customers is zero initially now if I do add a customer by saying one over here it says enter the amount a121 as the account number or whatever enter waves over here as the name and now at this point the customer has been added also if I try to deposit if I add another customer by pressing one over here another adding 120 bucks over here account number 123 the name is Anki and this time Anki has also been added now if I try to deposit money it's gonna run the for loop remember because now I have pressed 2 over here as you guys notice it says a112 and a123 right here and this is nothing but this system.out.println which is browsing through the different account numbers so our job is to take the input from the user so the first thing we are gonna go and say is enter the account number at the top and we're gonna read this inside our ACC which we created earlier by saying ACC equals to buffered reader dot read line 
this is gonna store the account number now ACC was already defined as a string right here in case 1 and that's the same variable we are using here in case 2 so at this point we are gonna check if the account numbers inside this for loop match with the account number over here that the user just entered now for doing that I'll use an if condition inside I'm gonna say if account temp equals to ACC then in that case we should tell the user that hey we should go ahead and deposit money now let me put dot equals over here to compare the two string objects because I've talked about it in object references saying that you should not use equals equals so here I can directly say system dot out dot print ln and I can say please enter the amount to deposit at this point again the user is gonna enter something I need to take that inside a double variable I'm gonna say double dot parse double so at this point our account temp object that we have we get that object and we perform the deposit by saying temp dot deposit and the money over here so that is how the deposit is conducted so what I'm gonna do is make a variable over here I'm gonna call it boolean found equals to false so initially we are assuming that no account number has been found if this statement executes which means we found our account number to match with the what the user entered here we can say found equals to true otherwise do nothing so outside the for loop there are only two possible things either found is false as it is or found became true now found became true definitely means that we did perform the deposit but what if found is false in that case I could say something like this I'll say found equals equals false then the account number was not found so at this point our deposit method is complete and if you guys are wondering how this works well let me explain once again you have the account number that you ask the user now if the number of customers is zero that means you have not added anyone in the above steps so far hence you should say directly that the account number is not found now of course you will not say that customers were not added because that doesn't look like a good message for a bank right so here in the else condition initially we'll assume that we did not find anybody inside the for loop what we try to do is go over each customer and get his account number and compare that account number ACC temp with the account number the user wants to deposit money inside if we find that account number we tell the person please enter the amount to deposit and we get the money that the user wants to deposit and we deposit the money by calling the temp dot deposit now let's let me show you inside the account class there is the deposit method that takes the money and performs the depositing work right so here you can go about and now you can say found is true because ultimately you found the person so now outside the for loop there are only two things that are possible either this if statement did not run at all inside the for loop which means no number matched with the account number the user entered in that case found is gonna remain false otherwise here if this if runs it will be true so if found is false it obviously means that we did not find the account number so this is how things work now let's maximize the output screen and run run this once again I'm gonna say shift F6 here I'm gonna say first add customer enter the initial balance 120 a121 as the account number enter the name as vivs and then it says customer name vivs balance 120 account number a121 was added same way I'll add another customer enter the initial amount as two 520 bucks enter the account number a122 and then the name as Anki over here and at this point it says customer name Anki now if I try to deposit I'll enter 2 over here and then it will say enter the account number I'm gonna say something like 120 and then as you guys notice it says account number not found because what happens in this loop is inside the for loop it takes a121 which was the first guy and a122 which was the account number of Anki and tries to compare that with this number that I just entered which was 120 since nowhere a match is found this if condition does not run hence found stays false and that's why this message gets printed but on the other hand if you do find something proper let's see what happens I'll enter 2 over here enter the account number let's say a122 which is Anki's account number now it says please enter the amount to deposit so if I put something like 50 over here then it says 50 was deposited to your account the new balance of your account is 570 now if you go to the top Anki's balance was originally 520 50 was deposited making it 570 which means this is working perfectly now if you guys are wondering how exactly the withdraw method works it's just the same just copy paste the code and change the word amount to deposit to amount to withdraw that's all you need to do so again copy paste this entire thing 
just as it is go to case 3 paste this and here you have to ask the same things again you have to say enter the account number number of customers is 0 that means no number was found otherwise you can go and browse through the number of customers and here you simply say enter the amount to withdraw that's all you need to do and that's one more thing you need to do go to temp and say temp dot withdraw this time and specify the money and that is all that needs to be done so now let's test this as well so there first let's add some customers I'm gonna click one over here enter the initial balance hundred enter your account number I'll say a 121 enter the name Vivs and it says Vivs is added now let's try to withdraw money because our minimum balance is 100 right so we cannot withdraw money right now so if I say withdraw over here it says enter account number I will say a122 just on purpose and it will say account number not found now let's again click withdraw over here enter account number a121 and then the amount to withdraw in this case I will say something like 10 bucks and as you guys notice it says insufficient balance to remove 10 bucks so first I need to deposit money because our minimum balance of 100 is being kept in my account right now so now let me actually deposit some money by clicking 2 here enter account number a121 enter the amount to deposit let's say 500 and 500 was successfully deposited the new balance is 600 so it's calculating perfectly now if I click withdraw over here enter the account number a121 amount to withdraw let's say I wanna remove 400 bucks or maybe say 300 bucks I'm gonna say 300 here and now it says you withdrew 300 the transaction fees is 10 your new balance is 290 so this is working perfectly you guys have understood something about how the deposit and the withdraw methods work from the main there's just two more methods that need to be done and that is to get the balance and to calculate the interest if you guys do like what you saw please like this video share this video Subscribe to our channel and let us know your thoughts in the comment box below. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a nice day.